On last week, we started a new series, God Provides. And when we think about God providing, a lot of times our minds automatically go to the provisions of the natural. But God provides everything that we need to dwell upon the earth. He provides everything that we need, uh, which are the tools that we need in order to go back with his son when he returns. And so last week we did take a look at uh, four crisis points with the children of Israel and God provided for them in each one of those instances. Tonight, and we, we, we kind of left off on God protecting, that was the fourth crisis, uh, when they got attacked by the Amalekites, God provided for them. And so I want to go in in that area of the different ways that God protects us. He protects us naturally, and he protects us spiritually. It's, it's more than just, um, you know, when I say protection, uh, keeping us, sometimes we can find ourselves in, in argumentative situations and, and things of that nature, but there is a, a specific protection and a covering that I want to talk about on tonight. And when, you, when we look at this, we're going to look at how uh, for the Passover, with coming out of Egypt, be before they were dispatched out of Egypt, they were instructed to put the blood on the doorposts, okay? That was, that was the first protection. And the way that they did their sacrifice, we, we talked about this a little bit Sunday morning for uh, Sunday school. The way that they did the sacrifice, uh, they did it every year for the yearly sacrifice. Well, that kind, that kind of blood sacrifice, uh, it was really on the natural. But the sacrificial of Jesus Christ is our eternal. That's the spiritual side. So yearly, there was a blood sacrifice, and that was really for the natural. With the death of Jesus Christ shedding his own blood, that was our spiritual protection. So do you see how it, uh, God's message never changed? He always wanted to protect us. The method of that absolutely changed. And so we're going to take a look at a few scriptures. I also want to talk about how God uh, provides deliverance in times of trouble. Do you not know that you and I could face some trouble God sees it up ahead. That's why sometimes he'll instruct us not to go this way. Sometime, and, and, and Pastor Allen definitely touched on it Sunday when she said that he already warns us what to say, what not to say, where to go, where not to go. That's his way of protecting us. Another thing that we're doing in this series, and it just dawned on me, is each one of these, as we looked at God provides, last week we talked about provider, and the food and the water that he provided, uh, we looked at the name Jehovah Jireh. Well, when we're looking at protector, my banner, that is Jehovah Nisi. So we're going to look at him in that light. If you want God to protect you, allow him to do so because he has already provided said protection. We just have to all get to a place that we call upon the Lord. Do what the word says. Call upon him in the day of trouble and he will be there. I am facing trouble. I need thee, O Lord. And also when he sees what is coming ahead, he'll send you a warning. Now, just like God is near and waiting on us to show up with the word, we have to hear him when he speaks. We have to hear him. We can ignore what he said. We can override what he said. But just like he wants to hear from us, we ought to want to hear from him. And so, Lord, lead and guide me throughout my day. Reveal to me the spiritual attacks that has been released against me this day. Warn me. I'll take heed. Talk to me because I have an attentive ear to hear what you're going to say to me throughout the day. And so he's going to warn us. He's going to say, listen, don't say that. You know why? Because if you say that, that's probably going to kick off an argument. 
That's going to kick off some offense. That's going to kick off something else. And so he tells us, hold your tongue. Don't say that. The enemy has already put that thought in your mind. But God is saying, don't say that. So what you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to be a daredevil and say, I'm going to say it and see what happens? <laughs> or are we going to trust God and hold our peace and let him fight the battle? That's the kind of protection that I want to dig into tonight because a lot of things that we find ourselves in is simply because we fail to allow God to protect us. He is protecting us, yes, from spiritual attacks. And the enemy uses individuals to attack others. But if I would give hear, if I would heed to the voice of God, some of those things, some of those attacks, I won't even encounter. Because he already said, don't go that way. He already said, don't say that. He already said, don't you type that. Listen, there are so many times, I can't really say certain things uh, socially, because of, of, of what I've done as far as written books and stuff like that. But sometimes I want to say something smart on social media. And I hear that voice say, uh-uh, you can't even do that. There are some times I'll start a text. Uh-uh, I back up out of it. Listen, I, I hit that back button all the way. Now I'm going to be honest with you and tell you what I used to do. I used to tell somebody, um, Listen, I want to say this, but I can't say it. So will you say this? So I would send the message to someone else and say, I need you to post this for me. I'm going to go back and lack it and laugh, but I just can't say it. I was still wrong because it was still coming from me. I was still wrong. So after I got chastised from that, I'm like, well, man. I just can't say nothing. I got to back up out of this thing. Lord, you got to help me with this. And then, I, even when it comes up now, like I said, some things I be, listen, my, I can type with one hand. You just don't know. Or that phone, I be ready. Holy Spirit say no. You can't say that. When I released my first book, one of my own children said to me, oh, I guess you can't go up on nobody in public now. I guess you can't read nobody now. Because they're going to say, isn't that? So I'm like, wow, you just put me in a place that I got to hold this right here. Amen. I got to control these fingers. Amen. Amen. So he wants to protect us from ourselves. He wants to protect us so that we don't fall in transgressions, so that we don't fall in peril, so that we are not the culprit behind the dysfunction, the division. And do you, let me tell you something about this protection. Do you not know that we're supposed to cover ye one another in such a way that here's the way the Holy Spirit said it to me. Somebody offended me by doing something, right? Do you not know I couldn't share it with anybody? Because I got to cover them because they're a saint as well. They're one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I had to cover them by not sharing their offense to me. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, but I'm the one who was wronged. I'm the one who was offended. And I got to cover them. I say, now, nah, What? He said, with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? That's a hard lesson. Mm -hmm. But in order to make sure that I have clean hands and a pure heart, I had to cast down my thoughts about the situation, my feelings about the situation. I had to put it in God's hand. And whenever it rolls up, I still have to, nope, I've already released you. Nope. I've already put you in God's hand. Nope, I can't discuss it. Nope, I can't think about it. And in that fact, the Holy Spirit was saying, in this, you are covering the one who offended you. Now, did I do according to the word and go to that person and say, hey, I did. But I still had to 
cover that person. And I'm saying, God, how that's supposed to work now? What do you mean? How, how, how is that, how is that going to work? How does that benefit for me? He said, because I'm making sure you enter into the kingdom of heaven. I am protecting you. I am making sure that you got clean hands and a pure heart. I am making sure that you don't have any offenses held against you. So if I called you on this day, or if, it's, if you got a blessing that has been released, listen, that blessing can recognize you. That blessing can get to you because you've cleared yourself. Amen. He protects us. Yeah. And I never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. I never thought that, wait a minute, by me covering and praying, that's why he said, pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. That's some major protection right there. Mm -hmm. That's so that when I worship, there's no hindrance. When I pray, He's attentive to what I'm praying about. He can hear me because I have learned the concept about this mouth, those thoughts, those typing fingers, getting it all lined up. Nope. Mm -mm. You can't entertain that. And so I'm like, wow, you're protecting me to make sure I don't go to hell. He protects us. He is Jehovah Nisi. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. No matter where we may go, God is there. And so I'm learning that, Ed, listen, day by day, day by day. And this particular lesson, I had to learn, uh, I want to say, ooh, I don't, I don't think we're 90 days yet. <laughs> that one is not 90 days old Amen. that God said to me, you have to cover them. Yeah. And I said, it ain't fair, but he took me to the word, mm -hmm. <laughs> which means I have no more argument. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when it's dealing with the word, I, I don't have an argument. I ain't arguing with the word. I don't have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. All right. So our first area of deliverance, let's look at, two instances in the book of Acts. And the first one is going to be uh, in Acts 12. This is dealing with Peter. Protection. And I'm going to start at the first verse. It says, Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. We're in Acts, the 12th chapter. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. So think about this. He did this, putting, grabbing Peter, because he found that it pleased the people. Mm -hmm. it's, and, and then it was the time of the Passover. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarantines of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I'm talking about some protection tonight. When you are connected to believers, do you not know that you don't have to say anything about what you are going through? You might witness it. Somebody might see it, but you don't always have to pick up the phone and say, I'm going through this and I'm going through that. I should be able to pick you up in the spirit. I should be able to look at you and the Holy Spirit reveal about praying for you. He, he's not going to give me details. Sometimes he'll say something specific. But sometimes your, your name just might come up in my spirit. I might see your face or he might show me something. My responsibility at that time is not to come to you and ask you your business. 
He allowed me to see it for a reason. He allowed me to hear your name in the spiritual realm for a reason. My responsibility then is, God, what you want me to do with this? Because I don't know what to pray about. So Holy Spirit, lead me in prayer. That's some protection. So it says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now I ain't talking about that, that pancake prayer. That fly by, hit and miss. Uh-huh. Pray till a breakthrough comes. Pray until you are released mm -hmm. that the situation has gotten a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we do that anymore. I think sometimes we are so blinded by our own lives and our own situations that in real realistically they're going to be all right and we keep going. No, we're supposed to pray ye one for another without ceasing. So that while I'm praying for you, God is healing me. But I don't know how we can watch each other go through and not go into prayer. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to experience that either. I don't want to see something on someone and ignore it. And it says they prayed without ceasing. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shone in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise, up quickly and his chains fell off of him let me tell you something that was some powerful prayer sometimes when we are called to come in to pray corporately you got a prayer going on over here you got a prayer going on over here but it's not done corporately if we coming together to pray what we coming together to pray about we should be on one accord I shouldn't have a prayer going on over here and you got one over here. Uh-uh. When we come together corporately, we should be on one accord for prayer. If we're coming to pray about some strongholds, some deliverance, some sickness, some healing, we should all be unified in that. Amen. Because if I'm in this corner and you in that corner and you over there and you... And listen, where's the corporation? They came together to pray. That was protection. And you know what? That released God to move because they were on one accord. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. And so they came together unified on behalf of their brother who was in trouble because somebody wanted to please flesh. But God said, not so. So do you see what happens when we come together and we're unified? Mm -hmm. Where one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. When we come together corporately mm -hmm. and we set our minds, we set ourselves to agree. This what we come in to pray about. Oh my God. We got God's attention corporately. Mm -hmm. Coming together. It works the same way in the household. It should be a unified prayer on one accord. Coming to agree about what you're going to pray about. And let me say this. If we are agreeing with it, then everything in each individual have to be in agreement with the agreement. I'm going to say that again. If we are going to come together and pray. Every individual needs to be in agreement within themselves on the agreement. Because if I say we're going to pray for this, but in your mind and in your thoughts saying, mm -mm, I don't agree with that. You just, you just broke up the unity. Mm. It's not on one accord. Amen. So before we come together and pray, let's agree what we're going to pray about. And that is what they did. They agreed that Peter should be set free. That no hurt, harm, or, da or danger should come near him. Mm -hmm. They agreed that he would be delivered. My God, when is the last time you unified with somebody to agree on some deliverance? Amen. 
to agree with some healing, to agree, that is the protection of God. That's protection. They agreed. And God heard them. And there was a release of a response from heaven. He sent the angel. It says it right here. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. I can see that spiritually because before it happens in the natural, it happens spiritually. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he had saw a vision. So that tells me that ain't had nothing to do with Peter. That had to do with the church coming together and praying on his behalf. Amen. protection yeah. mm -hmm. he protects us mm -hmm. through others it's not on our own somebody is praying for you you don't have to know it God will lay you on somebody's heart and it is according to what you need God is saying okay this need has come up before me I'm going to put this name before somebody over in this country that country that state in the same house with you and listen we don't have to know each other we rise up when we hear the call of prayer and we pray until we release from the holy spirit i believe that they prayed until there was a release because the angel shows up that that tells me that there was a release help was on the way so whenever you find yourself in turmoil Call unto the Lord in the day of trouble. He'll answer you. Uh-huh, he, he'll answer you. And what I love about this particular instance is when Peter was, re was released, and he down the street, and that, he thought he had seen a vision, but he's really free. He's really set free. Peter, go to, listen, I know, I know they're praying. I'm going to go to the house of the Lord. When we are set free and when we are delivered, do we find ourselves in the presence of the Lord? Thanking him, honoring him, worshiping him. I ain't talking about getting on the phone. Now, if you're going to get on the phone and use it as a testimony, that's, that's something else. God delivered me. But no, we, don't need, we ain't got time to gossip. I got to get to the house of the Lord. I got to make where I am my altar. And I just got to give him thanks on and praise because I know if it had not been for God. Listen, Peter was going to be killed after. He, that was the intention. That was the intention. God protected him. God will protect you. He'll sustain you. No hurt, harm, or danger was done unto him during that time. But they had him shackled and they had two guards around him. Oh, Peter. The next instance I want to take a look at is over in Acts, the 16th chapter. Beginning at the 16th verse. And this is about Paul and Silas. Acts 16, beginning at the 16th verse. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, at first reading that, the carnal mind may say, Oh, that's good. She recognized that they were men of God and they're talking about salvation but that was a demonic spirit mocking the men of God she was bringing attention awareness that spirit was bringing attention and awareness to the people they ain't like us <laughs> they ain't like us we, 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 have, we have this gift gifts are given without repentance but we using it for money gain 
So she was following them to mock them. And the enemy will do that as well. He will mock you. To make it seem like what you're doing for the kingdom of heaven is, is something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. No, I ought to want to do things for the kingdom of heaven. Verse 18 says, and this did she many days, but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Okay. For those who are in ministry and you are doing the will and work of God, when deliverance takes place in a, in a spirit, a demonic spirit is cast out of someone, they are set free, they come into the knowledge of Christ, I'm going to tell you this, you better believe that the enemy is now going to come after to retaliate and attack you. Why? Because you just snatched somebody out of his grasp Amen. of going to hell. Yeah. When somebody gets the teaching and the preaching and they accept it because scripture says in the day that you hear my voice hearten not your heart and so that day that the word of god is pricking at your heart and you receive that word the enemy is now on listen he want that person back but better yet he want the one who is bold enough to give god's word that's the one he wants and so now he gonna attack who Paul and Silas, but God is their protector. They were doing what God said. And so I want to encourage you as you are doing what God tells you to do, he is going to protect you. He's going to protect you. The gates of hell cannot prevail against what God told you to do. As long as you stay in the will of God, as long as you allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you, as long as you are following the Holy Spirit and you are obedient to that, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. He may try. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't say that they weren't going to come. He said that they won't prosper. So when those attacks come, you hold this. <laughs> Let him fight that. When those attacks come, you cast down what you think you want to say. What you think you want to retire, what you think you want to do, you cast that thought now. God got this. Because I was doing what he told me to do. So I know he's going to take care of that. It says even further. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. They didn't even care about her. They didn't care about her. The money pit was delivered. We talked about this last week. When you have individuals who are into making fast money, got that hustler spirit. Out there on the corner, selling this, selling that, stealing this, and reselling it. When God delivers you from that, and you are now working a nine to five, you're going to work. The enemy is upset. He upset. He'll even send people by to say, man, you know, you was, you was looking better when you was out there doing your thing. And do you, listen, you done clean yourself up. You, 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 you're taking care of everything that you need to be taken care of. And here come a lot say you was looking better out there. How? You was out there for three days straight. You ain't go bathe. When the last time you had a haircut or had your hair done and your pants down here, what you got on is dirty. You smell like last week, not yesterday. Last week, you're, you're hungry because you're eating chips that out of the store because you won't leave your spot. But they'll come and sell you a lie and say, you know, you was doing better out there. Than what you doing over here i can sleep at night I ain't worrying about nobody coming by shooting at me or robbing me i i got a roof over my head i ain't got to worry about nobody snitching on me but you want to sell me a lie that i was doing better over there that is a lie from the pits of hell and if you are weak you'll find yourself back out there but i came by to tell you that deliverance is on the way because God got better for you. He is your provider. He is your greater. He is all that you need. 
It says, and he brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews doing exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Remember I said she was mocking them? They weren't allowed to hear about Jesus. Mm -mm. Because they didn't believe that Jesus existed. They did not believe that he was the son of God. So they didn't accept Jesus. So it was unlawful in some areas today, in some countries, it's still unlawful to talk about Jesus. They'll put you in jail. They'll stone you. They'll kill you. They, they teach underground. So she was mocking them. Verse 22 says, and the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who having receiving such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. I'm talking about releasing something in the spiritual realm. You may have me in these stocks. You may have me in these chains, but there is a place of me that you cannot touch. And it is when I get into the presence of the Lord, when I submit myself and give him my supplication, you can't touch that. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to look at my servant and say, my servant was doing what I told them to do. They got clean hands and a pure heart. They don't turn from their wicked ways. Remember, Paul remember what Paul did but now he is out for Christ he is walking in the admiration of God and you mean to tell me he gonna let his servant sit in prison when in the midst of trouble you begin to sing you begin to pray you begin to give praise in the midst of let me tell you something see the enemy already a little nervous about you getting up every day especially when you're quiet in the morning see that's the thing about calling upon the lord early and you laying in bed before you begin to stir and you begin to give him thanks on and praise and you begin to say direct my day oh give me your plans for today and you begin to honor him and see you quiet see your mouth not moving but your heart is communicating with god Amen. the enemy knows listen when you went to bed it was some trouble okay but when you get up out of the bed and you got joy and when you listen you ain't trouble because you done laid there and meditated when you went to bed and back again when you get up in the morning the enemy is a little bit nervous when you don't speak when you don't give your opinion about a situation then the, the enemy is really scared oh and don't don't mess around and get up and move around well where's she going because she ain't said nothing oh my god what's she gonna do she ain't talking about the trouble she ain't talking about the heartache she ain't talking about the disappointment she is actually singing and rejoicing she got a song when she says good morning oh there's a clap going on in the spiritual realm and the enemy is nervous because he don't know what you're gonna do you ain't doing like you normally do you ain't complaining you ain't crying you ain't whining everybody don't know your business you don't pick up the phone and told everybody you don't even post it on facebook but this time around you're quiet mm -hmm. and he nervous mm -hmm. he nervous yeah. he can give you a thought but he can't read your thought he nervous. He nervous. Oh, when you get on up, you ain't even checking on that situation. You over here. He nervous. What's she going to do? Where's she going? Protection is on the way. A way of defense is on the way. God's instructions, that's your protection, it's on the way. You talk about being protected. You know how you really get protected? Get the instructions from God on how to handle something. That is your protection because you're moving the way he wants you to move. Not according to the flesh, not according to your past experience. That is your protection. Our protection is this. When I pray and I wait for a response, when I get it, I follow it. I'm protected. 
I'm protected from giving the enemy anything else to play with. Amen. I ain't giving him nothing. I ain't, I ain't entertaining him. I'm protected yeah. because I got some instructions. Yeah. I got some directions. Mm -hmm. And then you mess around and be obedient to that thing. Oh my God. Wait a minute. The enemy said, but that ain't what I was expecting her to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this new one. Who is this new one that done came up abroad? What is going on? Spiritual maturity. That's what happened. Obedience. You believe. Your faith is growing. The enemy don't know how to do. He, he can't deal with that, that, that faithful one. He don't know how to deal with that obedient one. And so guess what? He got to step back. He got to study you a little bit more. And then another trial and tribulation is going to come. He's going to come a little bit more intense. But I tell you, you do the same thing you did the last time. Oh my God, I thank you. I'm waiting on you to give me the instructions concerning this. My faith and my trust is in you. You are my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. That means everything that I need, you are my provider. You are my Jehovah Nisi. You are my banner. You are my protection. You are my high tower. I know who you are. I accept who you are. I receive who you are and I'm going to let you be who you are to me. And until you tell me what to do, I won't move. If you don't tell me to say nothing, I will keep my mouth closed. I will sing praises. I will honor you. I will think on whatsoever is holy. I will think on whatsoever is pure. I will think on whatsoever is righteous. That is what I will think on until you give me what to do. And guess what? It's coming. You got to get up expecting for the instructions to come. Keep you a pen and paper somewhere because God going to give me some instructions. God going to tell me what to do. Amen. Some things he going to tell you to do is going to be so quick you ain't going to get a chance to write it down. When he says get up suddenly and move, you got to get up suddenly and move. You ain't got time to say, well, let, let me run this by such and such. No, God said get up now and move. And by your obedience, the shackles are moved. They drop. Protection. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to tell you that that particular imprisonment was beyond Paul and Silas. God wanted to get the attention of the jailer. Sometimes we go through things and it's not about us. It's about God wanting to get the attention of somebody else. But when we sit back and we think about that thing, we'd be like, wait a minute. I had to go through that for them. Yeah. Christ went through that for us. He did. Yeah. So this right here was really, it, it was about delivering the young lady. And it was about that jailer and not just him, but his whole household. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. We're going to face some afflictions. And a lot of times it's because somebody is watching us. And somebody is saying, oh, wow, I want to get to a place of peace. I want to get to a place of joy. I see such and such. They're not saying their life is perfect, but they've learned in all things to give thanks. I want to get to that place. And so somebody is watching you. We talk about being the salt of the earth and the light of the world all the time. Do you not know that that light is on you and somebody is watching that you don't even know that they're watching you. It could be somebody who see you at the grocery store every time you go. They don't know your name. You don't know theirs, but they're watching you. It's something about you that say, oh, my God, there's a light. God, there's, there's something. There's a presence there. What is it? What is it? And then sometimes you might find yourself going through a little something. And you'd be like, where did this come from? Because somebody has seen that light. And as long as you persevere in the faith, 
You're going to make it through. Mm -hmm. And they'll come into salvation. And it could be years down the line. You finally get a chance to meet. Somebody might say, you know, I used to see you all the time. I never spoke to you. But I saw you. And I was encouraged by seeing you. And it caused me to begin to inquire, what's so special about that lady? And do you not know that I now have salvation? See how that works? But they were protected. They were on an assignment. Deliverance for the young lady and for the jailer in their household. That was an assignment. They had to go through something, but they knew what to do in the darkest hour. They prayed. They sang songs. They worshiped. <coughs> That's what we have to do. Now, there's something else that I'd like to share with you on tonight. And I want to look at the natural and the spiritual covering. So you will find me over in Exodus, the 12th chapter. At the 21st verse, and I'm going to read through the 23rd verse. Forgive me, I'm going to try and get this in. Exodus 12, 21 through 23. It says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in your houses to smite you. Now they had some instructions. Can you imagine going through the process of applying the hyssop, the blood, but you were disobedient and you came out. You forfeited your protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's Psalms 91. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. I have a fortress of protection that I am supposed to go in. I'm supposed to hide in that place. Now, if I forfeit and come out before my time, I have forfeited my protection. If I run my mouth when he told me to be quiet, I have forfeited my protection. If I entertain thoughts of striking back and revenge, I am forfeiting my protection. Don't tell me uh, that you cannot put this flesh under submission yes you can yes you can yes you can mm -hmm. so don't forfeit your protection that was the first passover and in tradition yearly as i said in the beginning traditionally every year the priests they would kill a lamb that was their time to ask for forgiveness of their sins. So first the priest, he had to go in and he had to, we use the word consecrate it. He had to ask for forgiveness, be consecrated, and then he could do it on behalf of the people. That was once a year. So imagine the day before the Passover, before the, the Passover began, they send up a storm and raise all kind of hell. That day they got, they asked for forgiveness. They went before the priest. The following day, they went back to raising hell. But God says, I, I got a better for you. I got a sacrifice for you. This sacrifice is spiritual. And so when I read this, I don't know if I'm going to get time to go into this. So if the Lord does not shift me next week, we're going to get into Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Because it begins to talk about the sacrificial 
spiritual part of the covering of the blood. And it connects it with the reason why God sent down the word through the Virgin Mary in the likeness of flesh is because this lamb was not going to have any spot or wrinkle, no blemishes, no faults, no sin. This is a blood that can cover you in the spiritual realm. The blood in the natural could only cover them in the natural. But what the blood did when Christ shed his blood covered us in the spiritual realm in wicked places. So where the enemy attacks us in wicked places, high places, in the atmosphere, that's where our protection is. Because that is where the spiritual warfare is. So I want to dive into that. It is 7.54 and you know I keep it at an hour. I want to dive into the shedding of the blood. That area of protection. That is the spiritual protection. He has you covered in the natural. He does. But it must begin first in the spiritual realm. That's where it begins. Your protection begins in the spiritual realm. And it started with through God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That's where it started at. So when we begin to think about the blood of Jesus, the blood of Christ, yes, he died for our sins, but when you look at it at a, at a deeper level that says his, his, his shedding of blood protected me from sin. His shedded blood because it's holy, because it's pure, no blemish, no spot, no wrinkle. Oh, and I have the blood of Jesus covering me. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, that's why I say the spirit lifts up a standard. That blood, they did it in the natural. You accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the spiritual blood covering your life. So when you think about that, he shed his blood for me. His shed blood is protecting me spiritually. And it overflows into my natural life. Now see, when they did it in the Old Testament, it only stayed in the natural. The natural cannot converse to the spiritual. Mm -mm. But the spiritual can overflow to the natural. So you are covered. Covered and protected. Think about that. Think about that this week. Think about that tonight. Begin to say, Lord, you kept me when I knew not. You protected me when I knew not. I can't protect myself, but I know that you can. You are watching me when I'm not, oh God, when I'm not even watching myself. When I am sleeping, slumbering, God is watching and protecting. You know what he watching over? That word that dwells in you. The Holy Spirit. You got the word. You've accepted him as Lord and Savior. You acknowledge him. He is your God. Jesus is your Messiah. The Holy Spirit is your God. And while we sleeping, sleeping so good, you know, you get up in the morning, you got, you know, you don't even know it. You know, slog, you go look in the mirror, you got a little white around your mouth. He's been protecting us. We go about our day. Sometimes we don't even pay attention to the atmosphere around us. We don't even, listen, our peripheral is, we ain't even got peripheral. We just, we don't notice nothing, but God sees all and he's protecting all. And guess what? I'm going to close on this. So when the enemy come at you this way, oh, it's a shield. And you just keep going on. Over here, a shield, uh, another dart is coming. But God, the angel is dispatched. You say, uh-uh. Especially when you're on your way to do the work of the Lord. And the enemy is throwing all kinds of darts. Listen, they don't, they don't even come nigh that dwelling. Get into Psalms 91. It said it won't even come nigh that dwelling. Why? Because he's protecting you. Amen. 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 We got something out of tonight? Yeah. to God be the glory listen if I had another hour and if I if I could I would go on into Hebrews 9 but we're going to save that till next week let us have prayer amen God is good 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 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to say thank you for today. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for coming, bringing us together, drawing us together by the Holy Spirit in the unity of faith. I thank you, Father God, for being our protector. Lord God, even when we don't know, Lord God, you are protecting us. You're protecting our families, Lord God. You're protecting our finances. Things, God, that we don't even think about, God, you are protecting. I ask you right now that if you would release unto your people all the areas of their lives that you are protecting even now, oh God, minute by minute, second by second, Lord God, you have your angels encamped all around us, protecting us, Lord God. I pray right now that they will begin to hear your voice when you heed the warning, when you warn them about certain situations and certain people, Lord God, and places, Lord God and words that are coming out of our mouths and thoughts, Lord God, that are ensuring in our minds, Lord God. Warn us, Lord God. Let us hear you. Let us be attentive, Lord God. Give us a heart of obedience, Lord God, a spirit of humility in the name of Jesus. I pray over those ministers right now, those abundant lives, Lord God, those carriers of the gospel right now in the name of Jesus, that they are protected and shielded, Lord God. They are on their way to do the will of of the Lord. I thank you right now, Father God, that you're giving them revelation and knowledge and understanding. Open up the doors, Lord God, and when they get there, Lord God, we bind the hands of the enemy right now that will try to stagnate their word, that will try to throw a stumbling block, Lord God, of what you told them to do, Lord God. I thank you for every obedient, willing vessel in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the needs of your people right now. You know where we are. You know what we need. I thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, reaching them, oh Lord God, so that they can apply that knowledge, that wisdom, and understanding. I thank you for the instructions being released right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.